Hello, I'm Carolyn Kinane with the Contemplative Sciences Center at the University of Virginia. And this is the second in a series of videos on contemplative course design. I invite you to have a look at the first one on the contemplative pause because now I'm going to be connecting the contemplative pause to course design. So the first step you'll recall in the contemplative pause is awareness. So here's where I simply notice what I am doing in my classes and what I'm having students do in my classes. I look at the syllabus, at assignments, and I consider the ways that epistemology and other academic habits that I practice cultivate dispositions. So how I come to know a thing impacts my interactions with it. And so here's where I look and I say, how am I asking students to be with one another? How am I asking them to be with the course material? So for example, through my assignments, are students practicing being competitive or isolated or dominant? Are they practicing being materialist, instrumentalist, self-interested? So this is where I check in, not just with the content of the course and not just with the skills that are developed, but unexamined academic habits, unintentional practices and dispositions that assignments cultivate. The next step you'll recall is inquiry. So are these in line with my goals and values? Is this how I hope students to be? Is this what I want students to practice? So here's where I inquire and I think, um, you know, I may want students to be able to be collaborative, empathetic, playful, to be able to take perspectives, to offer generous reading. So I list out my values and I list out my intentions. You'll then recall that the next step is presence. So seeing with fresh eyes, recognizing context and revision becomes possible. Here's where I return to the course. And once I see my old habits, I am able to tap into and create better fitting goals for students. The next step is discernment. Here is where I choose what to do in light of the information that uh, came from the previous steps. And then action, design and deliver the course. And then, of course, reflection. Check in. How did it go? I hope that you keep a teaching journal or you have a community of folks you can check in with and uh, reflect on your uh, teaching with them. So the general orientation is this, that being contemplative can mean bringing attention, awareness, presence, open inquiry, and reflection to that which we do. So contemplative is an approach to whatever it is that we're doing, envisioned at CSC as bringing attention to awareness, presence, open inquiry, and reflection. And when I bring this approach to teaching, some folks say, well, there's nothing special about that. That's what good teaching is or what it should be. And yes, my point is not that contemplative is some new innovation. Contemplative processes have ancient and global presence, but it's rather that many areas of contemporary, capitalist, Western, white culture denigrate the contemplative. And as a result, much of higher education, I think, has an impoverished vocabulary for contemplative processes and very little space for these necessary human processes. And so overall, I'm interested in how I can reclaim the contemplative as a necessary complement to critical and creative processes. And basically, that's my triumvirate of education, critical thinking, creative expression, and contemplative inquiry. I'm happy to do a deep dive on that someday. And the form that this works take, the form that this work takes at the Contemplative Sciences Center really focuses on practice, on the role of practice in transforming habits. So it takes practice to develop habits of attention, awareness, presence, open inquiry, and reflection. And I see these as radical counter practices to the automatic adoption of cultural norms, such as mindless consumption or the Protestant work ethic. And, and it's not about the practice. Contemplation itself is not an end. Again, I see it as a complementary perspective or way of being, and that contemplation is in service of human flourishing. And so CSC promotes contemplative practices that empower people to live lives of flourishing, to bounce forward from adversity, to live meaningful lives in alignment with one's values. And our work is supported by studies showing that these capacities for attention, awareness, presence, and so on, increase resilience and a deep sense of contentment. Now, this doesn't mean that there's no struggle or adversity in a person's life, rather that a person has the capacity to meet struggle with strength. So this is not about meditating away stress, but rather about building a capacity to discern what needs to be done and having the tools to do it well. 
So I hope I've outlined how the contemplative pause can inform some course design, and the next video will be the contemplative pause in teaching and learning moments. Thanks so much for your time.